touch anything. <laughs> it's the greatest find yet. Nothing compares to it. But it's definitely something you should hear. This is The Real Deal with Larry Lawton. All right, everybody. Larry Lawton here. We have a great show today. I got my good friend and one of the best podcasters out there, Ben Kissel, my buddy. Uh, he is all the way from California. We're doing a little technology here. Yes, me. 62 and technology. I still suck, everybody. But before I get started, let's uh, thank my sponsor, which is Oliva Cigar, uh, Crook and Diamond Cigar. We're really doing good stuff, and we're going to get into this podcast where, of course, Nick is here with us. So uh, all you guys, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nick. Or, no, thanks for having me, Nick, and thanks for having me, Larry. You're welcome. You're very welcome. No problem. <laughs> so, Ben, you're, you're in the show. Let's talk a few things, Ben. You, you know, you're all over the news. You're very well educated. Our last show, we got a lot of comments saying, man, he knows his stuff, which is true. Right, uh, right. What do you think of... O.J. Simpson dying at 76 years old. I mean, Orenthal, James Simpson, he's officially dead. My God, what a roller coaster of a life he had. Fantastic running back for USC, Buffalo Bills, an amazing actor with naked guns, a small snafu with the possibility that he murdered two people. Although if he didn't, the suspect list just got smaller. So if you are a detective <laughs> out there, it's OJ's off. He's done. So go find the real killer. But Mr. Simpson, I have a bone to pick with him. And I'd go to the coroner's office right now and slap him in his damn face for what he did to me when I was a child. 1994, New York Knicks versus the Houston Rockets. Game five, NBA finals. The, the, the Knicks were only there one other time other than that in my lifetime. And this guy has to go on a white Bronco chase. It took forever. All of a sudden, I'm listening to Marv Elbert talking about how he likes to get his bat bit and talking about John Starks and all these great things. And then next thing you know, I'm watching this low-speed car chase, which annoys the hell out of me to this day. Patrick Ewing was on his way to a double-double. The Knicks ended up winning that game. That was the last game they won the whole damn series. So, OJ, I give him a mulligan on what may have transpired that evening. Uh, with his ex-wife and uh, her current boyfriend. But what he did to me as a child regarding the New York Knicks and missing that basketball game, I'll never forgive the bastard. How much money? I love it. Lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, Ben, because, you know, you just hit me with all that stuff. I'm a Knicks fan. I, rem I remember the 69. Now, oh, boy, my age and myself, uh, the Knicks back in the day, Willis Reed, Phil Jackson, and, and you know, when they nope. did stuff back in the day. Uh, going to Before games Bill Jackson decided to come and be our general manager, inside job to sabotage the New York Knicks. He was still upset with the way that we beat the hell out of his Chicago Bulls. Yeah, sure, they won every goddamn series. But you know what? It was an inside job, and he tanked the entire franchise for years. You know, Ben, obviously you know this as well as I do, that Phil Jackson is probably one of the best coaches in, in basketball. And not so much for X's and O's, because I think they all can do that. I think for psychology, I mean, he knew how to handle egos in, in, oh. and that's what it's about in a professional level. I think it is, uh, but you're giving him a pass on the murder. I'm not giving him a pass on the murder. I'm just saying, I mean, we're going to go with what the jury decided. They said, Oh, that glove does not fit. We got to acquit. It's not just a great rhyme. It was, he had one of the most expensive defense teams of all time. Uh, it was what it was. And obviously with the OJ Simpson trial, it shifted, right, because the LAPD did have a lot of issues, a lot of internal corruption, uh, a lot of problems, a lot of uh, negative standing with uh, with the Society of Los Angeles. So OJ almost became secondary uh, in that OJ Simpson trial. We had Jay Leno and his big, uh, you know, big old chin having the dancing Edos on, on the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Judge, judge Edo. Double murder trial, right? And it was just like, look at this judge. I wonder what's under the robe. I mean, everything was just so goofy around it. And then it more became an indictment on the LAPD. And OJ was like, my hands are too big. And everyone's like, well, that's the that's the small amount of doubt that they needed because the LAPD fucked up. Hey, if the glove don't fit, you can't acquit. Uh, you have to acquit. But, you know, 
Ben, here's what I thought about the case. And we talked about it last night, not even knowing he passed away because I was out with a bunch of friends. And, you know, listen, I, as a guy who's got a law degree and, and talk about the law, in my eyes, listen, the man was not was found not guilty. That doesn't mean you're innocent. He's found not guilty, right. which is important because in our set, set of values, technically, by law, Ben, he was supposed to uh, not be judged or even, in other words, his criminal history is gone, everything else. He was acquitted, and, and it actually after a jury acquittal, which is the best acquittal you could ever get, not even a, a, a judge's acquittal with the, what they call with prejudice. So what happened here, Ben, to me was when he got arrested for getting his memorabilia back, yeah, they sentenced so him. They sentenced him, I feel, and most people do, for what he didn't get convicted of. Absolutely. And you mentioned the word prejudice and obviously uh, the two words, uh, Mark Furman come to mind. It doesn't really help that he was on, you know, the uh, on record saying the N word like a lot. And uh, again, that's why that murder trial became so much larger than what it was. And in America, this was the beginning of a true crime television boom. You know, pizza sales during the OJ Simpson uh, car chase again car crawl let's be honest that was my only thing as a kid i was like speed it up let's go don't you have places to be my god but pizza sales for example you know this is before everything got delivered with uber eats and you can get mcdonald's and and taco bell you could you know have anything you know uh, in your hands in a second pizza sales skyrocketed you know hundreds of percent people are watching at home realizing this is must see tv and it transformed America and American television and how we view right, wrong versus celebrity and entertainment. You know, actually, Ben, and you know this as well as I, Marsha Clark was so outgunned. Uh, uh, you know, you had the Kardashian guy, you had, of course, John, uh, Johnny Cochran and Alan Dershowitz and the Kardashian guy. He, she, she was so outgunned. Every step of the way, they just blew her away. And, I, and as a guy who watched that trial, you know, it's like, this guy is, I everybody thought he was, again, here's what I've learned, though, Ben, from that. I don't know what your view is on it. Uh, it really shows me, and it showed me even back then, that the media gets a lot wrong. Yeah, and that's why I'm not a big, big believer in watching the media, whether it's with Trump or whether it's with Pelosi and the California issues. I was going to get into that one time with you on your show we'll have, if you want to announce anything, you can, or anything we're doing, because the media, you can't believe the media, Ben. No, especially not when it became so monetized. I'm going to be launching the Ben Kissel channel in June, so that'll be real fun. Uh, check that out. It'll be on iTunes and things of that nature. But well, I, once, I hope I can do it with you. I can't wait to have you. But once the media became monetized, and once everything became, you know, for profit, I mean, I've been a victim of, of, of you know, uh, clickbait yeah. hit pieces. I mean, nothing real doesn't matter. Truth doesn't matter. It's about yeah. advertising dollars. I mean, that's why we can't get anything. No one's talking about uh, what's going on right now with Boeing. You know, we just had a dude to get off a little bit off subject, but there was yeah. a whistleblower for Boeing because their planes are falling out of the freaking sky, which is pretty vital for a plane to be up there. And he ended up committing suicide, suicide a day before he was supposed to testify. Why isn't anyone covering this? It's because all the television news, uh, all of the um, even the written news you'll see online. Boeing pays them a lot of freaking money to cover stories that they want to cover. So we'll learn more about the aforementioned Kardashians and not about what the hell is going on uh, when it comes to life and death aviation issues. Also, when it comes to. Uh, celebrity and fame. You mentioned uh, Mr. Mr. Kardashian, the lawyer. You know, O.J. Simpson, I was just reading an article how he was talking about how he boned Kris Jenner in a hot tub. So now all of these stories are going to start coming out and it's going to be interesting here for the, you know, 48-hour news cycle he's going to, you know, get. But all of these stories about O.J. Simpson, we talk about the key moments, um, but now we're going to see a trickle of you know, what was his life really like? And interestingly enough, you mentioned the um, the Vegas robber, right? The Vegas robbery. That dude that he held a gun, he held a gun to this dude's face, right? That dude and he ended up becoming friends. 
He actually didn't, Ben. He did not, Ben. Just to let you know. He did not. Well, I wanted well, to just to let you know that, you know. We got you covered. He had, so. uh, he had he had a group of friends with him, and there was a gun pointed at this dude's face. His name was Bruce Vermong, and he ended up saying that he's super sad OJ is dead. He says uh, he's going to be sorely missed by many, and uh, he says, uh, oh, my God, I've, I've, I'm trying to find the quote here. He talks about how OJ and he were, like, close, and they were good buddies, and OJ was one of the nicest guys he's ever met. So there's something, you know, people forget OJ Simpson was the face of Hertz rental car of, of any product you could imagine. You know, he was the Shaquille O'Neal before Shaquille O'Neal was, you know, in I said bigger than that. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. So he was so freaking big and that just kind of shows you uh, again, all things aside, he must've been pretty charming. If you're going to tell me that I'm the robbery victim and I'm now friends with the person that perpetrated it. Again, as you mentioned, I think that that was a little bit trumped up. And uh, it was more a vengeance against uh, the not guilty verdict. I think they tacked it on, you know, and here's what happened with that case too also. But he didn't have, he didn't pull a gun, Ben. Just let's get that straight. Okay. That's, you know, it was somebody else there, people were there. So he went to get his material. Like, this is a guy with no record, technically. Uh upstanding citizen, all the whole want to talk about it, and he gets screwed. But I have to stay on the crime session because we're going to get yeah. one more old thing, and I have to ask a question because, again, the media, and I'm I'm on a limb on this one. I'm being honest. I've been getting a lot of backlash uh, from friends more than anything because I haven't did. I'm going to be posting the Diddy case. So the it's not even a case yet. Let's get that straight. There's no case. Nobody's been indicted. Nobody's been arrested. It has made 50 Cent's Instagram very enjoyable and funny, though. <laughs> oh, I love it. There are some people who are certainly ready to uh, pour some uh, some uh, mud on that grave before it's even, you know, again, before they've even officially filed anything. Well, Ben, you're a person who, let's face it, got, got, got I think got bullshitted with, 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 with innuendos, non-provable, a lot of, you can do a lot of that. None of this has been proven uh do i think personally he's a freak he's got a lot of money to all these billionaires who knows what they all do <laughs> but but to give to, to really they're, they're dragging his name through the mud they went in there like it was a, 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 a i don't know we're invading kuwait or something uh right. the way they attacked these two houses I, i'm not buying it ben I, I cannot listen when a woman comes out in my view i might get slammed for this <laughs> Uh, when a woman comes out years later and makes the accusation, who knows what really happened at that point? Uh, well, I'm going to let the, the Diddy thing is going to work itself out. The one thing that I think is interesting, perhaps there's cameras, maybe there's a little bit of blackmail. Either way, that whole Diddy thing, that's a whole nother can of worms. And I, I think it's too soon to even talk about it because no matter what, you're going to be the weatherman saying it's going to be sunny on Friday and people yeah. are going to be real pissed when it starts raining, you know? So I don't even want to speculate. I have no idea. I will say the militarization of the police with the 1030, uh, with the 1022. Oh my goodness. Is it third? Oh my, I haven't mentioned that in a minute. The militarization of the police um, that has gone so far beyond uh, the pale, you know, and everything that's used overseas at some point and come, comes home to roost. So, yeah, when it comes to the way that things are handled in this country, uh, they'll do a, a, you know, a low level drug bust or whatever. And you would think they were grabbing, uh, you know, El Chapo. This is a problem in America. And that is something that I think can be talked about for sure. Well, I look at that 1033 think, program. Oh, that's what it is. The 1033 program. That was when the military, all their old shit the police departments were able to get it at a premium. So that's why you got a small town in my home state of Wisconsin that has a freaking tank. And I think the biggest crime was that someone, you know, farted way too loud after eating some cheese fondue. I mean, it's insane. Well, you know, Ben, on that note, and because I talk about that subject as well, first of all, they were given the equipment, but people said, oh, we're getting it free. Whoa, whoa what about training your crew? What about man hours? What about nope. maintenance? And that's the citizens. And my view on policing is, yes, we need it 
a, a bigger organization, whether it's the sheriff's department uh, that are a lot bigger than these local ta- town police, whatever a local police department has for weapons, so to speak, I think a civilian should have, if you're going to go with the Second Amendment. Because we had a police department right here in Florida. It's called Christmas, Florida. Little town. A lieutenant and, and I think an assistant chief were KKK members. They were arrested by the FBI. Jeez. Now, the little police department, Ben. So... Right. What makes them so, you know, that they can have all of this? And, you know, there's many cases. I've just been looking up some cases. I don't know if you heard about the five cops that were, uh, went all went to jail for 20 years or more. They were murdering guys, grabbing them up. I think in Alabama or Louisiana. Right. Uh, I did crazy. hear about that. And, and again, that all, you know, just to bring it back to OJ, that was really what the national conversation became. It was like, what the hell are these cops doing? What are they being allowed to do? What are they being incentivized to do? You look at Ferguson, Missouri. I mean, no one talks about Michael Brown anymore. We're going to talk Nick's going to. He's from there. Uh, yeah. But you with Ferguson, um, you know, the, the cops, a large percentage of the city's revenue was brought by tickets. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not what the freaking cops were supposed to be. They're not supposed to be tax men with guns. You know, they're supposed to be out there protecting and serving and doing all those great, um, you know, uh, Andy Griffith type things. But, but obviously things have gotten so corrupted. And so you have situations like that, Ferguson, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So that really became the larger conversation with the O.J. Simpson trial and then obviously the aftermath of him being found not guilty. And then, of course, he was found guilty in the civil case with Ron Goldman. He still owes, I think, a hundred million bucks or something like that. Like he owes like a bunch of cash. And I think they're going to try. Not to, anymore. Not anymore. I think they're going to try to get some of his houses or a pair of flip flops or maybe a nice pair of Crocs he had. I don't know what they're going to get. But that was what was so interesting about the OJ case. And that's why it's like, yeah, this 76 year old dude died. But if you just look at the story arc, and what it did to America, this dude is a, uh, he is not just a cliff note. He's not a side note. He's a chapter in this damn place. Well, I said that, you know, it was funny because I, I have a group of friends, Ben. I mean, we have like 20 of us, very close, elderly guys, most, a lot of tired, not retired. And we go out a lot. A lot of sagging and, balls, a lot, a lot of balls. Oh, a lot of sagging balls, that's for sure, <laughs> at our age. You're getting there, you're getting I there. I want to. I want to be one of those guys who has the balls hit the in the water in the toilet. I, I, remember, I didn't know that was possible. Oh, Larry, that's what you always bitch about. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's the only complaint during hotels that we go to. I'll officially feel like an old man as soon as my balls are wet. You know, but what I was getting at, and I mean that is... Let's move we, on. Larry said, let's no, move on. From- <laughs> we, no, I want to ask you a question too, Nick. But, Ben, we talked about O.J. Simpson last night not knowing he passed away i only really? found out this morning uh and when not knowing at all we were talking about because i was with a judge actually we were all talking about how he got screwed over whether you like him or not whether you believe or not that about uh, of the robbery case because of the uh the acquittal of the murder and what you said was right and i said listen we have police now it's such an us against them mentality what happened to protect and serve? It doesn't say fuck me up or be against your citizen. You know, it, it doesn't say that. It, it yeah. it's a it's a shame what's going on. It is. I don't think they should be like that. And I don't and cops even don't get paid enough. I say it all the time. Absolutely. Uh, from that from that perspective, and uh, I think every single civil servant needs to be treated better. I think they need better health care. I think the system, the thing that trickles down is the suffering. You know, so if you're getting shat on, you hate your job, and you're a cop, that is going to trickle down into, you know, anger, rage, bad police behavior. And not to mention, you know, because they are so stressed, because there are uh, not as many, perhaps, as they as there should be, uh, it, you know, so they're working too many hours, they're working too many shifts, and the people that suffer are the citizens. So all of that stuff needs to be taken into account. And, and sadly, again, it's 2024, and this was 1994, so we're 30 years now away from the O.J. Simpson um, fiasco uh, with the New York Knicks, of course, and still, <laughs> of course, not the murder. Still having this conversation. That was way worse than the murder. Well, you know, well, you know 
where you say, of course, we're on the same page, obviously, because I think it might even started before that, Ben, with the Rodney King. I think it was 92. Uh, might have been a big thing. But as a question for you, Ben, well, yeah. and Nick, Nick, I want your advice. Or, or Do you remember, you lived in St. Louis, Nick, so you remember Ferguson, you remember. Yeah. Well, ben made a great point. You really did, Ben. You made a point about people f- forgot, I didn't, that they were, get, they were really charging these poor people ticket money, and, and yeah. really it got to that point. Uh, and I used to say to myself, and I still say to this day, if you're going to riot, don't riot in your own town. You're only going to burn the store that gives your kid milk, you know, it gives you credit. Uh, don't do that. Go to Beverly Hills and riot. Like, they, they buried Watts and burnt it down. Why don't you just go to Beverly Hills? Just see some change happen real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. but- and, you know, that's an interesting uh a sentiment as well. And, you know, a lot of that stuff, I don't want to get too conspiratorial, but there was something that happened in Minnesota during the Minnesota riots that occurred during COVID. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of things bubbling up and obviously the lockdowns, people really, uh, they over that bubbling up overflowed into the streets, but there was a situation that happened. It was, I think it was an O'Reilly's auto part auto parts where this guy went in, he broke all the windows out and he left real abruptly. He was covered up. A lot of people were calling him a cop and things like that. There's a lot of there's a lot of behind the scenes things that go into um you know people spontaneously organizing. Yeah. Like 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 yeah. brick placement or pallets of, you know, like mm, I don't know, pipes being placed next to uh businesses during riot times or construction right. equipment. And, yeah. and that being said, that doesn't give you the right to pick it up and throw the damn thing. No, yeah, but I get it what you're also saying. It also yeah. makes it a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, it's it's very confusing how like tension starts to happen, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you start to see like, oh, all this new um, the, these building bricks are being uh put around everywhere, and yeah, you know, that's I, I, happening with St. Louis. You were just finding like random destruction equipment everywhere. You know, I don't know and, if- and, and and sorry to interrupt, Blair, but no, again, when it comes to St. Louis, and when it comes to uh, we'll go back to Minnesota as well. The media loved it. It was a media field day. They're out there. I mean, if there wasn't uh, an explosion every 20 seconds, they would make one happen. Uh, Yes, man. Yes. It was so quiet. And then on the news, it wasn't quiet. But I was right there being like, this is not what's really going on. Like, my house. Did you go there? Huh? Were you there, Nick? Yeah, I went. I had a broken spine. So I stayed in the car, but it wasn't like, insane like everyone was saying it was oh it wasn't as bad as what they showed i mean yeah but then you just had them replaying the same shit being like oh look what's still happening and it was like no that happened like three days ago guys right i think what happens at law enforcement guys is they become defensive you know of course they don't get recognized for maybe saving lives or doing what they No. and all of a sudden they do something and there's listen I often tell people, if you have a, a, a company, you have 100 people, you got fuck-ups. So you have a police department with 1,000 cops. There's screw-ups. There's losers. There's there's really bad people in that 1,000. Obviously, I'm a believer that the leadership of those places have to weed them out. And I often tell police chiefs when I speak it around the country on that is, listen, police yourself first. You know who's the bad guys. You know there's guys out there who are beating people or doing something. You know the bad guy. If you own a company, you know who the screw up is. You know they need to get and, hall monitors to you know patrol the policing system. Just get hall monitors. I mean, let's be honest. Everyone has a, a desire to fit in, no matter how tough of a person you yeah. are. Maybe Larry, maybe you've met a person or two who you're like, no, they don't give a fuck. Maybe I'm sure. You yes, have. I have. <laughs> but for the most part, people want to go along to get along. You know, and uh, the culture. There was a story many years ago now where. Police got in trouble at one of their conventions. First of all, they're just glorified gun shows. I mean, Beverly Hills Cop 3, where uh, where uh, Axel Foley goes to meet with uh, Belka, Belky Batonymous, uh, went in where they're looking at those weapons. All that shit is basically real. Obviously not the weapons. So you don't need a microwave. Right. No, no, no. Right. But there was another problem. They were selling merch that said, you raise them, we cage them. You know, this idea of uh stealing human autonomy stealing citizens autonomy you know one in 125 americans is incarcerated which is a huge freaking number huge number so uh again when it comes to oj 
And when it comes to how the black community was feeling, obviously I can't speak uh, for them, but from my perspective of, of how I would be feeling, this was one case, given many cases where maybe someone was innocent and convicted because of whatever reason, bias, uh, racism, whatever it might be. This is one case where they uh, felt as if it was it was a good thing. It was a good thing that O.J. Simpson got off. Um, it, it was it's a complex situation. Ben, were you living in L.A. at the time? No, I was in Wisconsin. Wow. Ooh, okay. You're in a little moved. town. Like, yeah, I was. In, that's how big this was. I grew up in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. It's a town of twenty five thousand people. And that's how big this. I always figured if I know who you are in Wisconsin, you're famous. You got to be so freaking. There's not an airport. You got to drive. You got to fly into Milwaukee and drive three hours to get to my hometown. Uh, although in Mosinee, they do have a small airport. Um, but that's how big this was. And it also created, going back to the OJ thing and talking about the cast of characters, it also created a whole bunch of sidekicks. Cato Kalen. Cato Kalen. All of a sudden, he parlayed this entire thing which he is a witness potentially um, providing a lover, a lover of, of Nicole Simpson. Supposedly. I have no idea about all that. I mean, Supposedly. It's not, bro, I've, I've been in LA for a little while now. I, I think everyone's got everyone else's stink on him. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but something wild. Okay. But then you had someone like Cato who all of a sudden he's on reality shows. He's doing this whole, he's a celebrity, right? And that's what he obviously wanted to be all along. He was an actor who found in a way that there was a, what I'm saying is there's a lot of people, strangely enough, that benefited from this horrible, horrible crime. Well, Ben, let me tell you what happens there. And that if you ever look at that, and I think that's a problem they have to deal with, when whatever famous case you have, whether it's Casey Anthony in, in FAR, if you remember that case. Of course. Uh, the prosecutor in that case went on to be the state attorney. The uh, the defense attorney, Jose Bias, become this big celebrity down in South yep. Florida. The judge in that case, uh, well, he, he was pretty quiet, actually. But they become famous people. Even, even what's his name? Uh, the family of the uh, Casey Anthony. Uh they're still out there. You know, I, I saw a case. I was an analyst on TV for that. Yeah. And, you, you know, when I saw that case, again, everybody, Nick gets mad at me. He goes, you always play lawyer, Larry. I said, you, let, let, Nick, you have to. The minute you start letting your no, own you I think he is, let him be guilty. No. no you He's slipped up. Now I know my, now, no, now I know my question, Larry. You slipped up. Do you think she's innocent? She's innocent as far as the courts are concerned. Well, that's not what you said a couple, you know, 30 minutes ago. You said innocent and found guilty are different things. Do you ben, think she... Of course they are. Of course they are. You said but she only person found... who knows that, Nick, is the person who did it. So well, that's, that's an issue within the person. Well, that but that is another... The Casey Anthony situation is another example of faulty police work. So they did this thing where they, I forget which one it was. I believe that they searched her Firefox account, not her Safari, something like that. <laughs> anyway, they looked at the wrong search engine. And if they looked at the right one, it literally basically was like, how do I kill my baby? After you kill your baby, what do you do? What's the nice, what are some nice clothes to put in your, uh, to put on your dead baby? Like they missed it all. So that was another case where the jurors are more just, if the cops fail miserably, it, and it's an obvious case where you're like 95% of the chance. I think she did it. I don't think that was pizza rotten in the back of her car. I think that was Kaylee, right? But if the cops fuck up that much, it leaves the jury no choice. Well, Ben, it goes back to if they're fucking up little things, how how do you trust them on the big things? Exactly. Uh, that's where I, I go with the Florida, I mean, and, and Florida was so damn corrupt. You know, uh, I think he is is. becoming the secretary. Yeah, as opposed to now. I spent. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm a Florida resident. I got my. I got my license. Okay. Um, Miami You're Bend. welcome. Miami You're Bend. welcome here anytime. A little serious show out there, perhaps in the future. But oh, yeah. uh, when it comes to uh, Florida, well, what was I talking about? Florida corruption. Uh, oh, I've just lost my thought. Now I'm just thinking Casey about Casey Anthony. Florida corruption. Yeah, yeah. I lost. It. It's gone. That, that you'll, you'll you'll catch it and you'll bring it I'll back. Get it. You know, I when I talk about the media, 
and I talk about what goes on in the media because I'm in, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'm on TV for these jewelry robberies or this Kardashian getting robbed and the inside jobs. And all I always preface it with, it's funny because I, and Nick is with me now enough that I do enough TV. They're, they literally, Nick will tell you this. They ask me to say something and I, that's not true, man. Oh, yeah. And I say to them, I'm not going to do that. No. Nope. Oh, yeah. but can you do it? Th- no, I can't. You're looking to make me build a narrative that's not truth. Absolutely. And, right, Nick? And, and you know, Nick, go on. Sorry. No. Nick? Oh, okay. That's okay. Um, but that, and, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. That- I said, yeah. Did you hear? I said, yeah. Oh, yep. good to hear you. Yeah. And to that and to that point, you know, again, when it comes to, you know, all the documentaries that are being made, all there's a lot of money. Uh, and oftentimes when money is involved, obviously, again, the truth might take a back seat. And I'm not referring to anything specific. It's just that's the way this works. Uh, look at making a murderer. If you look at making a murderer, that uh, documentary series out of Wisconsin, uh, there was so much evidence that the documentarians left out that looked made it look like Steve <laughs> were guilty. Anyway, they they didn't want to have that in there because they wanted the narrative that he and then Brendan Doss, uh, Dassey or whatever were innocent. So, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. I was working at Fox Business. I was doing Fox News and I was on Fox Business. I was on a show there. And uh, for the most part, I, I really enjoyed the show and and the people on it. But there was one person in the green room that came in. He was a high ranking military dude. Right. And we were talking about torture. We were talking about waterboarding. And he was like, waterboarding is torture. It's the worst thing that you could ever go through. I've had to go through it for training. It fucking sucks. It is 100% torture. And then he gets on TV, and I'm not joking. He says, oh, waterboarding, it's nothing. It's like drinking water wrong. It's like if you ever drink water and it goes through your nose, it's like that. So he just blatantly lied on television. I'm watching in the green room. And this is a guy with credentials right here. You know, I mean, this is a, a military man. And it really... I mean, and I saw a lot of that lie by omission, a lot. I saw a lot of stuff um, like that. And that just permeates throughout all media, not just television, but also print as well, because people have an idea, they have a narrative. And then once they have that idea and narrative, they go find the facts, but only the ones that fit that. And if it doesn't, they just don't include it. Lie by omission, I think, is the biggest form of lying that we're experiencing today. And, you know, Ben, you made a great point because as a guy who studied the law and, and did many, many law cases and see what they what you say, either not accepting evidence that's blatant or a cop and they dismiss it and they forget to deposition him or whatever. You know, it's so blatant. A lot of the things they do because they want the person to be either guilty or their number to be higher. I mean, obviously, I often say what kind of conscience you have. We have cases down and, you know, Florida is a Florida is the poster child for the country for whack or shit going on. And right. whether it was bad salts, whether it was, you know, whatever. And I look at that and I say, wait a minute. Why is it? Why do we have the media so whacked out? You know, I I think what's helped the, maybe it was going on back then, Ben. I don't know. Maybe you would know even a little more. But the reason I say that is I think the internet has truly opened the eyes of so many people. Because like Nick and I know, I don't lie. Nick goes, yeah, I said, I'll never lie to you. Because the media, I mean, the internet people will know it right away. I don't care who they are, they'll know it. And that's the end of it. (laughs) Yeah, internet detectives. And you know what? When you still see it, though, Ben, in 2024, you say to yourself, what is like, 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 again, is it a conspiracy with all the stuff that happened in Minnesota? And and, do I think George Floyd uh, uh, was killed by uh, Derek Joe? Yes. I mean, that's pretty much basic. You look at it, you see it. What happened? What happened to the other guys? I mean, it's... And that's the craziest part about all of it. You know, you can watch these events with your own two eyes. They can transpire in front of your face. And then they cut to the panel. And the panel, they'll say it's spin. It's lies. (laughs) And they'll say, oh, Joe Biden, he just nailed that State of the Union. He was so (laughs) articulate. And meanwhile, I'm watching him and I know he's standing on a bucket of ice. Otherwise, he's going to fall over once he gets too, uh, you know, hot and warm. He was on some speed for sure. (laughs) It it, it also kind of the the same factor of the Diddy thing. No, No matter what, what happens, he could totally be innocent and he's still guilty. It doesn't matter. 
Like he will forever now be guilty of these crimes that everyone's saying right now. He well, will be. I, you know, with Diddy, it's I think it's such a big case. And again, yeah. once we're now, obviously, they're calling it sort of the Epstein 2.0. Um, th- that I think is it's so vast and huge. But that's just what the internet drags thing. I mean, it's, it even goes with the like, oh, is is Will Smith and Jada Pickett like, you know, swingers? It doesn't matter what the internet thinks is the truth, even though it's not the truth. It's kind of what I'm getting at. That's you why know? it's also important sucks, to remember that you know? the the people on the internet they they comment today and and they forget yeah. they comment and they forget ten minutes later what they even oh comment. for sure. And yeah, so it is just true. up to us, you know, again to what are your tangible experiences. What did you see with your own two eyes uh, versus what you see online? Because I know a dude, I just met him uh, recently. He rents out airplanes and they're like cut in half airplanes. And uh, they just, all these influencers, they go to a hangar. They take, I think he charges like 500 bucks an hour. They take pictures of them on their phone or drinking champagne on an airplane. And then they pretend like they own a private jet. It's all bullshit. Kylie and, Jenner started that. <laughs> well, of course, in Kylie Jenner. I mean, let's not forget when she tried to, speaking of the riots in Minnesota, she tried to solve it all by handing an officer a can of Pepsi. No, so, yeah, that was, that was, um, that was literally Kendall. Pepsi. That was Ken- yeah. That was Kendall, whichever. Oh literally my God. Pepsi was- saw a riot and they were like, we got a lot of eyeballs on yeah. this. Let's get people sucking down our sugary, yeah. diabetic filled trash. And now- Person in the marketing. Sorry, was, guys. Might not, work. <laughs> might not work, guys. Not one but, person. Hey, hey, Ben. Let me let the audience know first. Thing. First of all, Ben is very knowledgeable. He's, he's been on the radio. He had multiple podcasts. The last podcast on the left, the Lincoln. Uh, what, what was it? The Lincoln. That was Abe Lincoln's top hat. Yeah, yeah, you had some great cool stuff. And you're very well respected in the in the media range because you do a lot of studying. You're very level headed, Ben. You give a, a calculated answer. You give, and you, and you know, you don't just talk off that. You know, you get a lot of people talk off the top of their head. I, I know law, I'll talk law or crime. I'm not going to talk the weather. I'm not going right. to talk certain things I don't know, unless I'm joking. But here's what I'm going to get on you, Ben, because I know you're all over the news, and I can't let you pass on this one. So you got to answer. Uh oh. What do you think is going on with Trump? Again with the Trump, I mean, I think he's stressed out as hell. Uh, you know, if I mean, you know, he's supposed to go to trial here. I know he's going to go to trial, and uh, it's, it's, man, I mentioned this on the last time. You know, the people are suffering. Americans deserve better. Everybody knows that. Uh, I was just reading Biden poll numbers are going up. We're about to be in World War Three. I don't know what to believe when it comes to the polling data again because. Nobody, it's it. Trump still has his base that is almost getting, speaking of jewels, uh, tighter and tighter and tighter the more pressure that he's being put under. And, you know, they're getting more united in a sense the more pressure he's under. And I just wish that the courts uh, would, would step out of this. And I wish that the American people just felt like they were in a process that was not being, um, at all manipulated. Influenced, manipulated, influenced by people who, let's be honest, have their own political end games. You know, Jack Smith has his own political. No one, no, no one here is an innocent teetotaler just trying to do the right thing. It doesn't happen like that anymore. And so once you have prosecutors attempting to make c- careers based <laughs> on, you know, getting prosecution, getting guilty verdicts, I know I'm, I'm sure in your experience i'm sure the prosecutor that prosecuted you he probably peacocked that around like he was you know you know the second coming of christ right so as soon as that has happened and that's what has happened it just muddies all the water and um people speaking of people who might believe some whack-ass shit some crazy stuff my friends the good liars they go to the trump rallies and people say things you know that's absolutely insane talking about jfk jr talking about just real wacko stuff so the whole thing is just completely off the rocker because but, uh, you know, ben, because uh, the courts have, have put their thumb on the scale you know but you know I, I also see listen i'm one for i always said this and i'll say it again i don't think we'll ever see the inside of a prison cell uh he's the president or former president i don't know how you'd even maneuver secret service 
uh, or any of this if there Ooh, would be. Knows. But I also know, and I'll say it like it is because I don't give a shit, Joe Biden shouldn't be a president either, although we know he's a figurehead. You're right. He's, he, you know, he's uh, listen, it's sad to say, listen, I don't hate any of these guys. They're my president. You know, I want them to do good. I but, what they did. You know, Ben, I just look at that and say, you know, I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day, and Joe Rogan had a good – he still don't believe that that, that Joe Biden's going to run. He thinks he's about May. He steps down for help. He, in comes Gavin Newsom. Kalamala says she don't want it. And she's a quiet – she's a distinctive vice president. That's I don't know. That's fantasy. It, That's fantasy. Do you have any idea how difficult it would be to have a brokered convention? He already got the votes. You can't just – that's – you know, the founding fathers, a lot of people think they were old. Thomas Jefferson was like 33. Most of these guys were like 18 to 25. I was you just going to say, very young. Yeah, yeah, very, very freaking young. And you look at, the, you know, the people you saw for the State of the Union. I mean, you got people like Diane Feinstein, RIP, hanging out with OJ right now in hell. Um, <laughs> living, living in Washington with active dementia. You know, so it's the selfishness of people not wanting to do what's better for the whole to self uh, to, to make themselves uh, wealthier, to make themselves uh, just continue to build the American people uh, for all that it's worth. And that is such an atrocity. You know, that's what such an atrocity that there's no um, accountability for these people to look in the fucking mirror and say, it might be time for me to go be a grandpa and a grandma and get out of the Senate yeah. or the house. You know, that, uh, you, what you say is so true because I remember Strom Thurmond and, and, and all these guys. And not only what they, you know, the Congress wasn't made for a career job. It was to help the country and they go back to their plantations or whatever they did. And again, you know, obviously it, was, it wasn't meant to have, you know, unfed acts. I mean, you got guys in there for 30, 40 years. Oh, if, if not me. more, many more. And, you know, yeah. again, when it comes to the courts, I got to, I mean, I'll be remiss if I don't talk about Arizona. I'm a pro-choice person. Um, what oh, they my. did yeah. in Arizona, uh, going back to this law from the 1800s, it is asinine that the courts have now felt like they have carte blanche to go and be activists in this way. And I think all of that is because no one, I mean, when you have Congress at a 10% approval rating over the past 30 fucking years, all of a sudden, another branch of government is going to say, well, I guess we can take the power because these old farts aren't going to be the ones who are going to do it. So now judges uh, and uh, and these courts of these states, and obviously the Supreme Court of, uh, of the federal government, they've just completely overstepped all of their power, all of their, uh, there's no, there's nothing uh, chaining them to any kind of responsible uh, legislation or judicial, um, uh, you know, activity. And they're not supposed to legislate. You're not supposed to legislate from the bench. You know, you know Ben, but, but for pushback on that, Ben, obviously when they form the country into three branches of government, the executive, you know, legislative and the judicial branch of government, and they, and they split it all up and, and it's supposed to balance each other. What I think has happened, and we both know this, we got, listen, I almost say communism is better because they get things done. We got a Congress that can't do shit. You got far left, far right, or well, whatever it is. It drives you nuts. And then I look at it and say, the Trump thing, right, wrong, or indifference. If they can prove without a doubt, and I don't mean just them, without, you know, again, how do you trust? I'm going to get into, I mean, you can get into that part of it, Ben. But at what point, does the regular citizen like Larry? I mean, I went to prison. I know people in prison. Yes, the number one jewel thief in America, the regular citizen. I remember when I did all of my robberies back in the 90s, just like <laughs> the regular it's American. It's normal to just to tie people up. It's a normal everyday thing to get tied up when you go jewelry yeah. shop. Uh oh. Hey, Nick, tell day Ben thing. what's coming out tomorrow. Ben can figure that one out. It's going to be a wild ride, Ben. The Jubilee show is coming out where I love hey, it. You Watch Larry for an hour straight get lectured by other convicts that the way he thinks is totally unreal. <laughs> no, I called him a bitch. The, the exactly. I might be canceled tomorrow, Ben. So <laughs> all right, gotta well, get this in. I'll I'll look out for it. But you know, to your uh, going back though, when it comes to America, right now we are in the worst of both worlds. We are 
we are uh, fiscally liberal and we are socially conservative. And, and it should yeah. be the opposite way. Exactly. And so it, it should be, it is so backwards right now. It is the it is the worst possible situation where the internet has made everybody walk on eggshells and then so, we're spending, I mean, I was just uh, not talking with, I was just listening to one of these guys who knows about the numbers, the economy. Anyway, he was saying <laughs> by 2027, the uh, just the interest alone on the debt, we're going to, we won't even be able to pay that anymore. So, and again, now we're in the trillions and I don't even know there's so many been, zeros. Ben, I, I can't even stop. track. Ben, I got to stop you right here. Let me ask you a question, Ben. You're going to call me a bitch, Larry? Never. <laughs> <laughs> You're too big, Ben. Hey, the baby ben. Turn. Yeah. Hey, Ben, I got to shoot you just to let you know. <laughs> the, uh, with a big gun. No, Ben. You're a very intelligent guy, and you're. I think you told me you're forty. I think you're thirty nine. Or I'm forty two. Oh, forty two. I'm eight years well, old. The balls man. dipping. <laughs> when, when, did dip start to dip? when did your balls start to dip in the toilet? Uh, I have big balls, Ben. So I was young. No, no. <laughs> right. I don't. Ben, seriously, on that note, let me ask you a question. And I asked this to many, many, even an economist. I had a, I had a presidential candidate on this uh, for the Libertarian Party on my show. Let me ask you a question, Ben. They talk about the debt, which I don't think I don't think it means shit. And I'll tell you why. It's Listen, above ben, my pay grade. Watch this though. Since I'm 62, I can't remember whether debt or not. And obviously, you're only on the balance the budget. We had debt, but he balanced the budget. Clinton. But let me ask you a question, Ben. Has everybody's life and quality of life improved? Yours? Yes. Mine? Yes. You're getting debt. You think China's going to come here and say, yeah. give us our money? I think it's about perspective as well, though, right? Because again, going back to that influencer thing where everyone is pretending like there's somebody that they're not. And then everyone looks at them and they got the nice filters and oh, they must be so rich. Meanwhile, they, you know, they're they're all in debt, right? So I feel like the grass is greener um scenario is so prevalent now. And, and people saying, Oh man, if I just had XYZ, if I just had, you know, that face or you know, that clout or whatever it is, um, I'd be better. So psychologically, I actually think America is doing just about as bad as it's ever done. Factually, I didn't say that. probably I said not. Probably not. Life. Yeah. But no. But again, that's that's quality of life. If you're psychologically fucking broken, your quality of life is going to be down. So yeah, it's easier than that. We're going to be good. You can get some food. You know, you can get a roller dog. I mean, you're not going to get some great food. You're probably going to, you know, America's food standard is so unbelievably uh, horrible, oh. um, and that's on purpose as well. Uh, keep you sick, get you on medication, have you die, or, you know, I keep agree. the process going. I agree. So I think like and the dumbing down of America. The yeah, total so, dumbing down. Of I mean, again, OJ, I believe if OJ Simpson was healthy ten years ago, which he was, I suppose, he probably could have won a House representative seat. He probably could have. I mean, I guess he's a convicted felon, so maybe not. I don't know. But you know, for federal, you could be a convicted felon. You know, so, all you need is that name recognition. And all, and now people have this. Um, it, it's irony has has jumped the shark. You know, Fonzie is, is fucking jumping over every other damn animal. He's jumping over walruses at this point. Okay, you Be lost Nick. Yeah, I don't. I'm just going along. I don't it's know. happy days. It's happy days. It's. I mean, it was you way know what that is. way before my time. But I wanted to relate to Larry. Um, so so we have gone so far. You know, we're just gone. We we're everything now again. Just going back to what people think of themselves based upon what they see other people supposedly living like has really just you know ruined the psyche of this country. And there's a lot of people that will just vote for the worst possible conclusion because they think it's ironic and they have no. Um, I'm trying to. I'm blanking on the term, but there's just you know, desperation in a lot of ways. And a lot of people are just saying, like you said, fuck it. Communism, maybe communism is better. I mean, not that it is, but that's the way people are thinking nowadays. Anything is better than this, uh, whether that be right or wrong. 
I don't know if that's the case. You know, I live with a 91 year old woman and, and my mom never had TV, you know, all that kind of stuff. You're talking about way back. And I told her, she goes, Oh, the old days were better. I said, mom, give me a TV. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, my point is right. things happen. Technology happens. I remember no cable, no, uh, no cable TV, no phones. No, I remember all of that, you know, and I look at it and say, I love technology. I love the way we live. Uh, do, do Listen, every single country on the planet can do better. Uh, we're not a small country. We have a lot of uh, diversity. We have a lot of a big country as far as logistically wise, oceans, Atlantic and Pacific and, and North, South, mountains and, and, and deserts. I'm looking at our, our stuff. When people come with the debt and they owe it, not one of them are going to do anything about it. Listen, what does it mean? I, I well, often have to saying, give, give me a reason. That the money doesn't mean the money means nothing. He's saying it. The, the debt is still kind of like I would say it's like representing where we are, and I agree with him. Where like these people are getting very depressed because Kylie Jenner has one hundred seventy thousand likes on Instagram, and society as a whole is only like dopamine that you can get is by likes and clicks, and that well, is just, really actually messing people up. The money means nothing, but it is kind of representing like. We are really sad right now as a, a whole, as a well, country. It's, it's, you know, you know, speaking of communism, you know, talk about China. They have the social credit system and people like to pretend like we don't have one here. But that's exactly what social really? media gave us, right? So it was like, uh, I forget what artist I was watching. Um, uh, was it Steve Earle, something like that? But he was talking about um, the first thing that they ask new artists now is what's your clout? You know, how many followers do you have? Yeah. Not, can you, let's hear a song. Let's hear a joke. Are you talented at all? The first thing is that social credit. That's what they're looking for. And again, because that's direct to consumer marketing, and that's exactly what the advertisers want. So um, psychologically, yeah, this country is completely and utterly broken. But do you agree that fixing that's it my, is hiding the likes? I don't think hiding likes is going to fix this issue. The no, way that think, you know no, hiding likes is not going to fix it. I, I, they yeah. might destroy the entire um media, uh, medium, yeah, of social, yeah. Of social media, but um, that that really is, I think, where people are right now. And uh, you know, hopefully, the, but, there's a new generation coming out that I think has now fully been influenced and inundated with uh, you know, the cameras and the screens in their faces ever since they were in pre K. And I do think that there's going to be a little bit of a Luddite movement where they realize this shit, we've done it. We've had so many, we've had, we've had so many great years and centuries without it. And I think we can probably scale back a little bit uh, when it comes to the use of technology to make, it's a tool. And right now I don't think that we're actively using it well, especially now that you look at AI and, there's going to be yeah. music. AI is going to be the next big standup is going to be Elvin, Elvin Id, idiot fuck. And, you know, he's going to have the <laughs> hottest new joke on the block and it's not going to be a real person. And that's the other thing when it comes to this shit with Trump and Biden, you know, people aren't going to believe anymore <clears throat> what they see with their eyes on the screen. And they can't because now you can animate a corpse, you know, you can do anything and you can have the crowd there. Nothing has to be there. So the amount, I, the amount of, I guess people are just very unsure and mm -hmm. they're, they're unstable because we're in completely new uh, times yeah. and it almost seems like every week there's something new and, you know, and, and again, that's kind oh. of why when it comes but to there's no, there's time or no negative possible news, way to like scale back at this point, I believe right. there's no I was possible going there, way there. we scale back well, at all. Well, you, I mean, no way. like the Telecommunications Act, right? So that was in place for a long time. In 96, they got rid of it, 95, 96. And that's when MSNBC and Fox News came. Basically, what that said was that if you have a candidate on your show, you got to give another candidate equal time. After that was gone, everything was the wild, wild west, and it all mm -hmm. became partisan bullshit. So yeah. you can put things in place. AI should have never been released in the capacity that it was. That should have been so, but because we have old fucking dirt bags in the uh, in in government, they don't know. They don't even. Mm -hmm. They're not aware that this is even going to happen. You know, um, so they're, they're and because yeah. they're behind, you know, you know, they can't step you know, up with proper 
legislation, not that I particularly love most legislation. We have too much laws, is it? But Ben, what what Nick Nick made a great point, and and obviously you can't stop technology. You never will, and once it's out, it's not going back in a bag. You are a hundred percent correct. Terminator, I'll stop. I'll do it. I'm Terminator. I'll be I'll be uh, John Carter. John Connor did. I'll do it. You know, Ben, what happened in Congress? They asked, just like with with uh, a TikTok. They're asking the CEO of TikTok, do you need the internet? You know, what? Of course you do. They're that oh. stupid. And all the country, all the companies are doing that, Ben. And again, so. when it comes to, I'm a First Amendment activist. Uh, even what happened with me, I was speaking, I'm a very First Amendment person, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Um, the fact that they talked about TikTok and banning it. When again, we are in the midst of fucking World War Three. We are about to have some insane, turbulent times, uh, it, it, internationally and of course domestically. And the fact that they're talking about TikTok, which, yeah, <laughs> am I a TikTok person? No. Is it annoying when people make up shit about you and put it on TikTok? Yeah, but that's not the main issue. The main issue is so much bigger than that. Yeah, they said, "Do you have does TikTok have access to my Wi-Fi?" And he was like, "Um, yes, it has to have access to the internet to be used." And they were like, "So let me ask the question again." And he was like, "Dude, I don't know how else to answer it." Like, but you know, they they sound they sound like someone in the nineteen fifties complaining yeah. about telephones. You know, yeah. it just is what it is. That that's not going to go anywhere. But again, it's how we as uh, people decide to harness it and use that tool. So. Hopefully, well, the ben, I'm, longer I'm, I'm, we have it, I, the better we can I know get. we're getting near the end, Ben, but I, I, I want to say I'm the pushback on this with you. I think there's going to be better times, and and I, I'm a very bullish. And I am not a, I am bullish on America and, and and the world. I think the kids are smarter. I think technology and the internet has more information. Listen, I know Nick works for me, and Nick literally, Ben, knows about stuff. And he passed classes because he did something on the internet where these schools right. don't want to teach it or whatever. I listen, Ben. When I was young, I learned about geography. I love geography. I learned about it with Risk. Do you remember Risk? The game? Of course. I played it all day long, so I knew where Madagascar was in the south and all the mm. continents. And yeah. you bet. So my point is, I'm not. I think there's tough times, but we do need. What really concerns me. Yeah. I mean this is the age of the people we have trying to run things and the lack of young people like Nick that want to get involved. Nick made a great point. He goes, I'm not going to vote. I go, why? He goes, you told me you used to corrupt mayors. I did. Why am I going to vote? You know, so. Well, you got to get, you got to get in the game. You got to get some skin in the game, Nick. And then you'll vote for the person that's going to. There you go. Start corrupting but, him. But do that. I gotta, start, I gotta be the corrupter. Yeah, to to continue that analogy though, when it comes to risk, um, that's great. You got to learn the map that way. I think a lot of people are also learning how to be doctors by playing operation, and and that's not going to necessarily get the job done. So it's up to us. We have it, the world at our fingertips. That's very true, and it is up to us to um, utilize these tools in the best possible way. And uh, it's just you know. I have one more question and, 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 and one more thing, Ben, for you. I think it's a, do you remember Newsroom? The TV show? Yes. With yeah. Aaron Sorkin, you know, with, with yeah, the Jeff only thing Aaron Sorkin, Did Aaron Sorkin ever hear anybody speak? Because he writes like, he writes like a robot. That was my only thing with Aaron Sorkin is he, oh, he writes like everyone's funny. And, you know, I worked at Fox News. No one's fucking funny. You know, the only thing that was funny was when I had to take a dump next to Sean Hannity, and I really understood he doesn't just spew shit out of his mouth. Um, but anyway, go on. What I was – listen, that opening scene to me – I just played it the other day. The opening scene when he's speaking in, in front of a college and a kid gets up, is America the greatest country in the world? And he gave a great answer about why it's not what – you know, what we should fix and – and even saying at the end, you know, the number one thing is to recognize you have a problem before you can fix it, you know, and stuff and recognition. And obviously, I'm not one of these, you know, oh, oh, we're always right. I was in the military. I seen the shit that goes on. I'm in the criminal justice system, which is probably one of the worst 
in the free world. I'm talking not third world country. I'm talking about free, Spain, France, Italy, Germany, uh, Canada, all that kind of stuff. But when I'm seeing the advances of cars and technology and people are now, what government? We got government out of people going into space. And now you got Elon Musk throwing up satellites. I mean, like at, at a rate that's amazing. And, and you got so many advances going. I'm not going to say, listen, is there, are there wackos? Is there a Kim Jong-un? Is there a guy who can throw a bomb? Did things happen? We had 9-11 back in the day. We had, of course, World War One. hello. World War Two. hello. Vietnam. I, I could get into all those things that really cost a lot of lives. And I think we're losing less lives. We have better technology. Medicine is even better. You know, like you said, operation, no. They're building robots. That yeah, now- but then again, you know, when it comes to lo- loss of life, what is America also funding? I mean, you got to mention Israel. you got to mention Palestine. You know, you got to see what's going on in Gaza. So, you know, now war is an export, right? So yeah, uh, there, maybe it's not happening here uh, yet, although it does happen every day here as well. Pockets of violence pop off all the time. But it's, you know, what are we exporting? And we've exported a lot, a lot of bloodshed across the country. And acro- I'm sorry, across the world. But you're right. I mean, I love America. I say all of this because I love America. And I know you know, there's a German immigrant. And, you know, I, I just... I, 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 this is, this is my place. This is, I've driven across America four fucking times now. And everywhere you go, you're going to meet nice people. There's so much space. There's so More many nice folks. Than not. And, and, you know, you don't, I didn't hear, no one has ever said something to me like a negative comment uh, on, on yeah. social media or Reddit. No one's ever said anything like you, that. You, you, then nobody, it, when yeah. you're out there, Nobody says to you, oh, no are you a Republican or a Democrat? Well, it's because the people who are actually- get, if anything, they don't want to talk about it. They're like, please, God, I don't, we're, we're people here. Like they, because they understand that those two uh, ideologies and those two parties have, they fracked us emotionally. And now we're fighting, you know, over, you know, we're just, what they have us fighting over right now is such social bullshit. And uh, it's really sad. So they can just go and do everything else that really matters behind the scenes. And and, and on that note, I also believe that, you know, they, we got people in America, oh, well, let's make everything made here. Man, listen, we live in a world economy. That's not changing. Uh, you can't be a, a, a isolist today. Do I think we can bring back jobs? Do I think America make more stuff, like you said, even export or build and, and invent and stuff? Because I think we, we, we got to that lazy part, if you want to call it that, Ben. Uh, uh, on that note, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with with you. You know, of course, you. First of all, when is your show coming out? I'm gonna start it in June, so that'll be great. It'll be called the Ben Kissel Channel, and then I'll just start like maybe just once a week, and then build from there. So just kind of hopping back into it. I can't wait to do that. So that'll be real fun. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Thanks for all the encouragement out there. Thanks for all the fans and uh, for the listeners. They've been amazing. And I've been getting some pretty cool art in my P.O. box. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting back. And then, it's been a, it's been a, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's been, it's been rewarding in, in so many ways. Well, Ben, I, again, we become oh, friends. And, and I got a new bird. I got a bird. <laughs> you know they live long. long, Ben. They live long. I know. I got one though. It's it's outside. It's on my Instagram, Ben Kissel one. I named it Orenthal after OJ. So I might have the reincarnation of OJ. Right <laughs> my court. It, you know, a, Ben. It's a phoenix. Nick, Nick, what do you have to say, Nick? I said, is it a phoenix? No, it's something real tiny. Oh, you don't even to... know what it is. <laughs> is he is he is he African American? I am no. It's real tiny. It's just a cutie pie. No, Ben, I want to say, you listen, you've been, we've become friends. I love your conversation. I love your intellect in, in what you, 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 your heart is as big as your, your body. And I think you're going to have a great show. Whatever your Thank topics you. are, your information will be in this at all times, you know, or whatever. That. And I also love your cigars. I just told you I finished my second box. So I got to send you some money and get some new ones. <laughs> But I never thought I was going to be a cigar guy. I wake up early now and I just sit on the porch. My dog, he plays in the front yard with his little cat I'm taking care of. And I just love your cigars. So if someone Thank is you. looking to, to get into the game, I don't know. I just found him to be like uh, just fantastic, super chill. And You know, Ben, just to let you know, a study just came out. 
and I'm mean, within a, a couple of years. Did you know if you smoke <laughs> cigars and not smoke anything, you have a longer lifespan by smoking cigars? Well, there you go. Well, and I, that's just because of stress, I think. What you yeah, just said, be. said it all. You sit outside after me on a tough day. I can go on my patio with my mom, yeah. smoke a cigar. And it's really relaxing. Thank Is you for refer, that. Does it refer to barbecue at all? Because I will consume me some smoked brisket. Ha! Now me too. Now don't get me on that thing. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm getting too fat. But no, nah, you look good, Larry. No, you do. You are Ben. Thank you again. Wish your girl, your people, your friends luck. Uh, uh, uh my you. best. And of course, we're gonna stay in touch. I'd yep. love to have you on next month again. You know, we can do some. You know, before you go. Uh. And and whenever, but and if you have anything to say, Ben, your word means something to a lot of people. And oh, we get we get replies about that. And thank you. you know, well, their, yeah. words mean, their words, no joke. Their words mean a lot to me. Yeah, uh, good. They really do. Because Nick, you want to close yeah. us out, Nick? So, um, everybody, see ya. Have a good night. Um, so everybody, have a oh. good one. Oh, and good. hey, Ben, that's that's Morty's voice. As Morty's our mascot, he's now, oh, he I told us, that. Uh, that was Nick's voice saying, you know, I'm a union guy. I'm supposed to get paid. <laughs> I love it. Best out of box. <laughs> nice to meet you, Morty. Good job, buddy. Hey, Ben, take care. Be safe, Good brother. Uh, and we'll, we're going to talk again anytime. Uh, have a great man. I, I love okay. talking. I'm going to go watch the Knicks hopefully beat Boston as long as OJ doesn't stop the coverage again. I remember that so good. Take care, everybody. That's yeah. Ben Kissel, guys. He will be coming out in Who June. Is we will let you know. Uh, Who is have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. And Morty, take it away. Who's OJ again? <laughs> Tell me one more time. Who's that? What are we talking about? Who's OJ? We're talking about Ben Kissel. And Ben Kissel's going to have a show coming out. Start yeah. whatever. Well, you can find it here. We'll have it linked all the time. And we're going to do put it on one of my favorite links. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe.